Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Canada, the Bahamas. So, so the map. And yo, lion. You gotta make it to the Bahamas, man. It's the summertime. It's your boy, so. Yo, I'm on my way. Welcome back to Who Dog the Day. We're here in 100 Studios, and we got so much money, but then how are you doing, sir? It's doing good, Jimmy, man. It's good to be here, man. I always in 100 Studios. You the newbie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said. yeah I, I'm the, I'm the, that's my second time here. I, I show us those live here. Well, I, I, I do my last three mixtapes here. This home. Uh, so this this is a great place because it's got a great engineer. The best thing about the studio is the engineer. He's gonna. Be what, what's the studio with, with the with the person behind? Yeah. So shout out to the media. Just some equipment. Yeah, that's straight up. Just quick, big equipment. That's it. But here, who that you know? Uh, we we like to go up, go into why the person did it, or whatever graphic might be. You know, most of music, but sometimes we we drench it off. But we have a veteran. You know, so this has been the game for a little while. So we like, okay, you take us a little back, the beginning of Sosa Man. Go by. All right. Uh, well, it started in college. Uh, I was really one of those dudes that used to clown niggas were going to the studio all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like be like, "Why you going to the studio? Ain't no money making in there." I was those dudes like have all the girls in the club and all the people know me. I dopping up people, and in that industry of, of seeing each seeing people out in the clubs, that's where the music come about. Then you start meeting people, and they be like, "Well, you know this guy good," but I don't really knew him from music. Mm -hmm. So people start coming to me about the music, like, hey, how I can get this out there, I know all the DJs, but I knew them straight from, if, if I knew them, that, yeah, if the gals wanted to hear a song, I could, that's really what it was about, if the gals wanted to hear a song, I could walk up to the DJ and say, hey, play this, play this, I'll do one, but uh, through that, uh, I, I did an internship with uh, T.I.'s group, I never met T.I., I always emphasize that, never met T.I., but his group in Orlando, when they're releasing the A.T.I. movie, and his, oh, and right, his movie, yeah, it's the only, days. yeah, that time, so, I, I came up with a scheme for them instead. They wanted us to give up water and flyers and hope people keep the flyers and, and drink the water. So we'd walk down the street after it and all the flyers would be on the ground. So what I did is I went to the water company and I said, let's put the fly on the water. Makes sense. Because people like peel it off, they like to keep it, they read it, they look at it, what type of water is it? And that just broke off until when I went back to Atlanta, we had a little meeting with all the executives and they say, this, this, this you. And that's what I really wanted to be, a, a music executive. That was the goal. I went on in, I, I got my undergrad in marketing and finance, double major, graduated magna cum laude, never made a B in my life. And I went on to do my music business masters, uh, the getaway. Uh, I went on to Berkeley Music and I looked at all the teachers and I went to all their YouTube videos and I watched them and then I bought all the books that you were supposed to order and I read them myself. I didn't pay the school fee, but I'm a master's graduate. They <laughs> got you, they got you. They got you. So, so since, since then we came to the Bahamas and it was really underdeveloped. The, the country was really underdeveloped from a standpoint of my type of music. Uh, not necessarily Reagan Scrape. Reagan Scrape was on the radio, but there wasn't a lot of new artists and I didn't see the growth as yet, but there were a lot of artists brewing. I remember meeting Dee's in the studio, Sketch in the studio. I remember meeting Zoltan in the studio. I was like, man, this, this, this is amazing. This is so much talent. And, but they weren't shooting videos. They weren't bringing the music out. They weren't setting dates. They weren't having events. They, were, they just wasn't pulling the trigger in a sense. Mm -hmm. So that's why I came in, man. I was the pull the trigger guy. People knew if they came to me, we was going to set a date. We was going to pull the trigger. And then the single started happening. Uh, we had uh, I'm a Boss. Uh, I signed with S-Types and they came out with Shorty. Uh, we linked up in Canada with my boy Lion. We went in and the songs just kept coming. Once you get them songs brewing and people hear a style that only you bring, whether it's at, whether it's at a development level or not, Mm -hmm. they, start to, they start to attach themselves to it. So this was one of the first times a Bahamian could be fly, or rap, and travel, and have cake. When you see him out, he buy in the bar. When you see him in the bodies, he have the finest gals around him. Like serious, like for real. You know, that was the whole image, the whole... Well, it was already created inside of me. If I wasn't rapping, I would have no, I mean, like, 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 for the country, like, yeah. you know, yes. get that pop, get that pop in. And I, was, and, and, and I also had the background of where I can speak to the radio in an intelligent way. I can speak to the sponsors in an intelligent way. So that's why I call myself Sosa, because it, I remember watching Scarface and everybody always talked about Scarface and I was like, what about this guy that is talking to politician on one phone, hang up, and talking to his killer boss on the next? That's who I want to be. I want to talk to the politician the way they know that I could call someone too, but, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted them to see that we can speak on this level, but I on this level. And, and that's where the name come from. And after I left S-Types, I went out on my own. And since then, I've been out throughout the U.S. just trying to learn a little bit more. I wouldn't say I'm in the U.S. trying to make it big. I've been learning a lot more. I've been sitting around the real, 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 real thing. 
and now uh, I come back and met guys like BDA, young guys like Shadi, uh, young guys like K Sim, you know, uh, girls like mm -hmm. K Sim, and a lot of beautiful talent is still down here. Young ladies like Wendy Lewis, uh, on all, all the guys that you manage as well. I don't know if you want everybody knowing all your big yeah, business, yeah, but yeah. you know, but but it was a great great movement, and I felt that you know it was a need for me to jump back in and give some knowledge, and also show them what caliber of music has to come out and has to consistently come out. But I'm really just back here for dudes like BDA and for people like K-Sim, uh, because my mission is to the world, you know, right now I work on my networks outside of here, and here's home, here's the place I like to get some rest. I know all the radio, I know all the DJs, I know all the sponsors, I know everyone, I know all the politicians, I know all the money men. So I've done my work here and I just like to rest when I come here, but, but it's these guys' time, you know, so I'm just here to help as much as I can. You said you came back as underdeveloped. Um, how long ago was that? Under the, I was about 2008. So it's, it's been about six years. How do you feel that um, it's, it's progressed since then? I think it's progressed a lot. In 2000, uh, 2008 or seven, there was an election. There was no rap artists, no R&B artists on it. Last election, I had 25 shows. MDs had 28 shows. Uh, Sammy Star had his shows with his clique. And so that development alone is a great development. Uh, since 2007, 8, they've had shows like The Green Hype, which just featured all Bahamian artists. Correct. And it was packed houses. And, and that's developed. The amount of studios and, 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 and engineers that are educated outside of the Bahamas and come back with their talents have increased. And I, I just think it's increased a lot, but it's more like, it's more like racism in a sense. It's crazy, but it's more like racism because, yeah, it's better. But is it really where we need it to be? As that's my last point, I feel that the SU's progress um, a lot. But I feel like we're still so far from where we could possibly be with all the talent. Like we have so much talent, but we need to find a way to break through that glass ceiling. I agree with you, I agree with you. And it, it, cont it continues with the youth. At, at times, we try our best. Like, let's just take, just take Drake in Canada. If we just think of Drake by himself, we'll forget about the guys that came before him in Canada. That, that started to get Cardinal, it. Official. Cardinal official, who is somebody who I saw, I was in the first row at the Drake Cons in Toronto, and Cardinal official was in the eighth row behind me, cheering louder than me, and and Drake shot him out. But that's what we need happening. We need BDA them on stage and me in the eighth row, and that's that's how you see advancement and evolution. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna get into more bigger money opportunities. I'm gonna put myself into my vision and my path. I won't stay here trying to fight a battle of music as I advance and have this one life to live. But I will leave knowledge and I will leave placement for a lot of other guys to do it way bigger than me. Ask BDA when you talk to him. If I don't tell him every day, if you don't be better than me by the time you're my age, you fail. Tell him that every day. I don't ever say be as good as me or, or follow me. I say, be better beat than me. me. Beat me, but right? And I do a lot. Beat me. I don't make six figures yet. You know what I'm saying? I made a loss way more than six figures, so we still at a loss. But I definitely think there's a lot of progress to go, and, and that should be an opportunity. We shouldn't look at it as a bad thing. That should be what people mouths water over. My mouth water over the fact that I'm the first rapper to have a video on MTV Temple. You know, the reason I said it is that I didn't make me the best. There was no rappers in the Bahamas that were doing it on that level to get it there. Mm -hmm. Same thing applies. A rapper hasn't been on 106 and Park from the Bahamas yet. A rapper hasn't been in New York and featured on a big show on tour. These are all great opportunities for that person or whoever that may be to say. Right? So he takes it. one to, to do it first. He takes one. And I follow them behind that, you know? I follow, I follow them. Everybody else could follow them behind, but I think there's a lot of progress that's happened and I think there's a lot for more progress to be made. I yeah. think people have to invest more money in themselves. I, I, I agree and I appreciate because like hearing you talk, you don't have to come back here and again, you don't have to, but you choose to do it because like, like we always say, you see the talent there and you see what you can do and you haven't done all this to me, like you say, you're very in the game. Yeah. Even the rappers are it's a young man's game. Like you said, oh hey, Jay-Z has yeah. made it where you could do longer, but still you try to focus more and making sure the rest of the country because you see the talent in other ones. I think they're going to have more time to do the things necessary to be a successful music artist. I can't be in the clubs until 4 a.m. and back up at 7 a.m. to be in the big corporate meetings anymore. BDA got to be in until 4 a.m. When I finish my corporate meeting at 11 a.m., I try to wake him up. You know, it got, it, 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 things have to transition. You know, I can't be here working in the studio daily, daily, daily and making sure progress is happening when I need to be in meetings or outside here traveling, opening up new markets or new networks for the future. And like I said, BDA, Scully, Travis Bow, these guys, they got to jump in and, and take over that nightlife. 
Yeah, we used to be in clubs all the time. I mean, the younger artists. I mean, me and D's, we just ride on past. True. Just past true. Here, the DJ let them know we checking and we know all the DJs. That's a part of the game you can't run from. So I definitely, I don't have to be back here, but God has brought me back here to, to bring me down to the lowest. You know, mm -hmm. he's take that money from you. You go over there, media can tell you sometimes if I don't feel like going home, I rent a hotel. And that could have been two weeks, three weeks. And that's right here. That's right here. I ask it. So it's just, he brings you down to a level to say, hey, appreciate the resources that don't cost any money. My boy Lenny always says that. In this music industry, if you focus on the things that don't cost money, and try to make those better, and then invest cash after, if cash is necessary, then cool. But, but I love being here, man. Don't get me wrong. I'm waking up to the beach. We jog the beach. Man, me and my boys be like, what? Look where we live. It's home. People that people pay money to come here just to visit and live here. You can take advantage of it. So to the back to the how much projects have you released prior to this one? You're coming up now. Um, but my first debut album that went USA was Dreamland, which was 2011. Mm -hmm. But I released eight mixtape albums before that. Right. Every year we release mixtapes. I released four mixtapes in one year. Last year, the Wake Up One Through Four. Yeah, before last, sorry, the Wake Up One Through Four. 20 HD music videos. Uh, uh, this one, Top of the World, is special to me because this is the new me. Mm -hmm. My DJ has changed. My my label is me. The money is me. Uh, the engineer has changed, the, the team has changed, with the exception of, you know, my, my closest, my closest companions. And it's all up to us now. And I'm also very much more experienced in lyrical play and what I've been doing. Because like I say, man, I'm the one in the clubs buying out. You know, a lot of these guys, they rap about it. And sometimes they don't understand that they gotta be, they have to be accountable for it. What they say. For what they say. And so, like you can say, be able to tell you, or Shadi's always said, well, you could be talking to Sos today, and tomorrow in Atlanta, tomorrow in Canada. Mm -hmm. I can wake up and feel that way, and then I've saved and planned enough, and I have enough of the support group necessary for me to do things like that. That's progress. And so we, 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 we're on, I think this is our eighth mixtape. Uh, this would be our fourth project released with original music when my album comes out, but it would only be my second professionally released album. And but see, you're you working on your sophomore, exactly. Yes. Sophomore, which is the toughest one, you know. I I, I agree. Yeah. People are trying to make it seem like the the first one is 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 the hardest, but I think after you, you have some type of because you've been working for the your first one your whole life. Yeah. The first one is always your life story. You know? The yeah. sophomore it means you have to recover from you and pour out your whole life yeah. in this first one. Yeah. What the hell are you doing with the second yes. one? Yes. And people have more of a deadline and timeline on you. Right. They say, okay, he didn't do this. You when when it's coming. Yes. And their opinions matter a little bit more to you. Because when you know that first one, you don't have so much of a, a team, you know. My boy Lenny always say, why are you listening to them over there? They got the money. They, they, they have experienced more than we have, and we have to meet them halfway. And so when I release, when I bring out a single, like we have this single that we love so much called Champion with El Padrino. Uh, but El Padrino Project, it's on his project too. And his has to come up before mine, uh, but my album date is first. Right. So we have to figure out a remix album after his album comes out to put it back on and it's things like that that it's gut-wrenching because it was a part it was the basis of the album uh, and so as we get a little older we get a little more experienced we understand how to play these games with the second album but the second album is tough people believe you have more money they believe you, know, you should be they should be paid a little bit more they feel the pressure should be gone because you really get the, the monkey off your back that they, they feel that straight and and then your friends like my first album uh, my, my team around me, no one had kids, no one were married, not even married with kids, some in law school, some off the school, some real estate agents, some are, I mean, so, it definitely, the next album is very lonely, the second album, because if you ever become a millionaire on that first album, you're gonna lose a lot of the shakers, right. you know, you're gonna lose a lot of the people on the side that really wasn't there for true, true reason. Turn me to this dog, call me Snoopy, it ain't nothing like the beach and the bad beach in the front seat, me on repeat.